Hey guys, it's Toby. I'm gonna to be showing you the five steps to becoming successful in business as an independent CFI. If you're anybody who wants to start a business while helping people in your niche, making an extra $10,000 per month or more, then this is the video for you. I'm gonna give you a big picture idea on what exactly has to happen to make your CFI business go through the roof. So when you're going into business for yourself as a flight instructor, it's important that you have the right mindset. And it starts with knowing your why. There's a great video called Start With Why by Simon Sinek. If you don't know your why, then you're gonna have a hard time really backing up anything that you do. You have to be mission oriented. My mission is to create great pilots, but the best way to create great pilots is to create great instructors. And the best way to keep instructors in the industry is to teach them how to make money. So for me, I'm going to make great pilots by giving flight instructors a way to make money so that they can stay flight instructors and then work on being good to make make good pilots. That's the way I operate in my mission. Next is the desire to help people. You have to be willing to solve big problems for the right people. One thing that you're going to learn in this video is that you have to sell to people who are valuable because of who they are rather than who you are. You have to be willing to bet on yourself. Can you be motivated to get stuff done without someone else breathing down your neck the whole time? Can you be disciplined? Can you show up? You have to be okay with not being perfect. You have to be okay with just moving forward and making progress. And if you can conquer these basic mindset fundamentals, then you're probably gonna be a person who would actually be good as an independent CFI working for themselves. So that being said, let's go ahead and dig right into the five step process for independent CFIs. This is basically how you can make $10,000 a month or more as a part-time independent flight instructor. Now this webpage is available for free. There's a link in the description below. You'll be able to dig into each of these items with much greater detail. What I'm gonna do is just go through each one and give you a basic overview of what's going on to get you in the right mindset. So in this five-step process for independent CFIs, the steps are mindset, offer, fulfillment, marketing, and sales. Let's go ahead and look at mindset now. So mindset is really the biggest and most important step in this five-step process. It's the step where everything starts, continues, and ends. It's always going back to mindset. It's a constant uphill battle, really, because you're always gonna be fighting yourself getting in your own head. The trick with mindset isn't knowing how to win the war, it's knowing how to win the battles and knowing how to get back up and just keep going when everything hits you and pulls you back down. But really, it's worth it all. In my experience as an entrepreneurial CFI, I can tell you it is completely worth it. Don't dwell on the pain, but definitely embrace it and live with it. As long as your eyes are focused on the mission and focused on the why, you'll be able to keep going no matter what you're doing. So mindset really is 90% of the work. It's a continual process and the outside perspective is key here. Having someone else like a mentor or appear to give you outside perspective will help you see more of the big picture. The basic four steps for nailing your mindset is first a high level overview, followed by breaking false beliefs, establishing true beliefs, and then washing, rinsing, and repeating. So the high level overview, zoom out, take a big picture. What is your why? Why do you do what you do? Look at yourself and your business, establish your vision. Here's what I want to do with my life. Establish the steps that make that happen. Not the other way around. Don't say, I want to do this and this and maybe that fits into my vision. What you want to do is say, this is my vision. Now, what can I do in that vision? And that's going to be most effective. Here's that start with why video. The link to this webpage is in the description below. Make sure you don't miss the forest for the trees, guys. You have to be driven by impact, results, and value. You can have the best everything, but if you're not doing your business based on giving people impact, giving people results, and giving people value, then you're not going to succeed. Your stuff actually has to be good. Look, you're not here to chase the short-sighted wins. You got to put more work than everyone else in order to be good. That's just it. And marketing becomes a lot easier when you focus on value. The second point of mindset is to break down false beliefs. And then once you've broken these false beliefs, establish true beliefs. Now, for both of these steps, having a mentor to help you go through this process is really important. These false beliefs and obstacles that are in your way are crippling you and keeping you from moving forward in the direction that you need to go. Learning to implement these new correct beliefs will give you clarity and propel you in the right direction. Now, YouTube and Instagram and videos are definitely helpful, but there's nothing like a dedicated mentor to help you get exactly what you need to succeed. In this webpage here, I have a bunch of false beliefs and true beliefs listed here, just some common ones. I'll go ahead and list two of them for you here just to give you an idea. The first here is I can't charge that much for flight instruction. The reality is that you can, and I do, and many others do as well. You must charge based on value, not time. It's called value-based pricing. Another false belief is that I can't make $10,000 or more a month as a part-time CFI. 
clarify. And my question is why? The reason that you're failing to get people actual results, failing to make money, failing to have the freedom that you want as a CFI is because you're charging hourly. You have no clear mindset, no clear offer, no marketing, no direction. I make over $10,000 a month as a part-time CFI, and that's just one of my four income streams. And I help many other CFIs do the same. So if you base your potential on what everyone else is doing, you'll end up staying just as broke as they are. Another common false belief is that you have to charge hourly to be competitive. And the reality is that people buy whenever value exceeds price. So it doesn't matter what your price is, so long as the value that you're giving exceeds that. So instead of racing to the bottom to try to lower the price, keep your price here or higher and simply race to the top to see how much value can I provide for society? How much value can I give to my ideal client? And doing that will make you do better work, get paid more, and work with people that actually value what it is that you do. So moving on from that, it's important just to start. Have the guts to learn this on the fly. You're not gonna know everything all at once, but having a mentor to help you get through this is critical. Step four in mindset is wash, rinse, and repeat. You gotta run this whole process on a loop. And remember these core principles, these key truths, okay? First is that complexity is the enemy of execution, but simplicity is a catalyst for action. Use the KISS method. Keep it simple, stupid, right? It's not about what you can't do, but it's about what you don't know. If you knew what you had to do, then you'd be able to do it. Right there, the number one problem that every entrepreneur has is that they get in their own way. And that's the biggest obstacle in mindset. There is so much more way to talk about on mindset. Go and read this webpage and watch my other mindset videos on Instagram and YouTube. It'll give you more clarity on what mindset looks like. So moving on to the offer. The single strongest lever on your business's success is nailing your offer. An on offer really is a simply how you take someone from A to B. It's basically who is your ideal client, what are their pains and desired outcomes, and how you get them from A to B. Who you feel Feel a call to work with, how to resonate and relate to them to build trust and ask yourself maybe what would I tell myself five years ago? What were the pains that I was experiencing five years ago? Talk to people about those. You have to figure out how you get them from their pains to desires. I use a customer success timeline, a very simple process that outlines in simple steps what I do to fix people's problems. For example, in my offer, the steps are mindset, offer, fulfillment, marketing, and sales. If I'm training an instrument student, it is instrument flying skills, instrument navigation skills, instrument procedure skills, instrument planning skills, and check ride preparation. It's five steps for instrument. I have a 12-step process for private pilot. Every offer that I have has a customer success timeline that goes along with it. Like I said before, it's important to sell to people who are valuable because of who they are rather than who you are. Some people value things differently. One person might value a private pilot certificate in their own airplane costing them $10,000, while another person, a Cirrus pilot, might value $20,000 to get their private in their Cirrus. Why? They value things differently. The problem that is being solved by them becoming a pilot is a bigger problem with greater value towards a solution than someone who is just doing it as a hobby. If you want to make money as a flight instructor, you have to target the people that have big problems. Where the big problems are, that is where the big money is. And again, it's not all about the money, but you have to think about the money if you want to be successful in business. I don't get why people think money is taboo. It's a real part of life that we all have to deal with. And the quicker you realize that, the quicker you'll be successful in this business. There's an Alex Ramosi video in this webpage. This video will make you more money than anything else on the internet. I can tell you it's a pretty accurate statement. So watch that video. One thing Alex says is to sell the same thing for more money by making offers that are so good, people feel stupid for saying, no. The bridge between the results that you give and the people that you give them to is your offer. It's how you get to these people this stuff. That is your offer. You got to have an offer that you're passionate about. You got to work with a niche. The tighter the niche, the more opportunity and the money to be made. And if you're not passionate about it, it's going to be very hard to be mission oriented. I'm on a mission to keep my fellow pilots who are made in the image of God alive. There's a pop out here where you can see my opinion on why pilot quality has degraded over the past century and a little bit into how we can fix that problem. My philosophy is very simple. If I teach one great pilot, 
pilot, I made one great pilot, but if I teach one great instructor, I made a dozen great pilots. So I'm using that as leverage to fulfill my mission. Make great pilots by making great instructors and make great instructors by helping them make a living doing it. So I go a little bit more into this here. And again, you can read that to see exactly what I'm doing. The biggest thing that I've said here is CFIs must change how they are getting paid. There's some videos here you can watch about that. I've discovered that the only way to get CFIs to be good, stick around and make great pilots is to reward them for their expertise through flat rates and dump hourly rates. If we can do that, we'll be able to get these CFIs who are leaving at 1500 hours to go to the airlines to stick around and actually train our pilots because two thirds of active CFIs have been teaching for less than a year. There's a large gap of experience that's missing. And if we're able to change the way that flight instruction happens and change the way people are getting paid for it, then we'll be able to make pilots safer by keeping better instructors around for longer. I have more on this little rant right here that you can read titled Liquid Gold. You can click that, it pops out, and there's a whole spiel all about that topic. So now you see that I have a mission that backs up what I do and why I do it. So get one for yourself if you want to have a solid offer. You have to nail your messaging. Messaging is not messaging people on Instagram, emails, or Facebook. It's about defining a message of what it is that you do. What is your I help statement? I help who achieve what through how. That is a very powerful statement that you need to figure out the core of your offer. In any flight training offer, you must have some kind of crazy flight training guarantee. And all you have to do in flight training is sell the outcome. Find your ideal client, figure out what their pains are, where they wanna go, and then figure out how you're gonna fix that problem for them. How are you gonna get them from A to B? In my flight training offers, I keep them very simple. I give unlimited instruction, unlimited simulator rental, and all of this to get them their certificate or rating for a certain amount of money. In this example of private pilot training in a client's airport, plane, I would give unlimited instruction, flight and ground, unlimited sim, all for a flat rate of 10000 Now this $10,000 flat rate is just going to the CFI. It's not paying for books, tests, airplane, anything. That's just the CFI's pay. Now, basically any CFI can charge $10,000 and get someone their private pilot certificate in the owner's airplane. Now, depending on your offer, of course, and your client, you can ask for more money if you're providing more value. Me personally, I typically don't charge less than $18,000 if I'm doing a private in someone else's airplane. And getting the that price point or higher is really based on your trust and credibility, which comes over time, but can be shortcutted through having a solid program, the solid plan and building trust in ways other than credibility. I have some stuff written in here about what I do if I provide the airplane, how I provide those guarantees. One of the ways that I mitigate the training time is I have an agreement that we both sign that says we fly so many times per week, so long per lessons. They have to have their written tests done by this point. They're going to buy these ground school products. They're going to do this by this time line, pay me on this schedule. People often ask me, hey, Toby, so what happens if a student takes a really long time to get done and it takes you more time and more work? They'll ask, does that bother you that you might have to spend a lot more time with a really bad student? My answer to that is very simple. It's a risk I'm willing to take because I'm betting on myself being good enough to take care of them right the first time. If I can fly with someone three to four times a week, on top of having pre-vetted them before ever signing a contract, go out and do some flights with them to see if you're a good fit. By doing those things beforehand, I'm able to have a much higher chance of getting clients that I actually want to work with and that I believe that I can help for this price point. And so far, I've had a very high success rate with this. Worst case scenario, I work a few extra hours and still get the same money. The, the biggest way to cover this risk is just charge more. Instead of basing your rate on say 50 or $60 an hour, base your rate on 100 or $200 an hour. That way, if it takes you more hours than you originally anticipated, you're already making a higher hourly rate. So that higher rate, covers any extra hours that you would have worked if you were charging, say, 50 or 60 bucks an hour. How this process makes $10,000 a month. Basically, you know, on average, it takes 80 to 100 hours of work to get someone done for a private pilot certificate. And if you're training nine hours a week, which is three lessons per week at three hours per lesson, it takes about three months to get someone done start to finish. If you take one student every month, that's 12 students a year. And if you charge $10,000 per private pilot contract, that's gonna be $120,000 a year, which comes up $10,000 
$10,000 per month. Look at it this way, one private student taking three months at $10,000 per student is about $3,333 per month. Multiply times three and you've got $10,000. If you want to scale this, it's not about taking more students, it's about raising your prices. So every time a new student comes in, charge a little bit more. For example, start at 10,000, the next student go to 11,000, the next student go to 12,000 and so on. And you're able to do that because now you have testimonials and you have evidence to prove that you actually did the work for the other guys, which makes you more valuable because now you're more trustworthy. Now, there's no reason why you can't necessarily charge the higher number for your first clients, but you'll have to build trust other ways than showing previous cases of work that you've done in the past. People ask me all the time, how do I know if I have enough trust built in order to charge more? The answer is really simple. It just comes down to asking clients for more money. If you ask them for more money, money and they all say no, then you're probably not worth it at that point. But if you start asking for more money and they start saying yes, that's your indication that you are worth it at that level. Of course, there are more ways to have clients say yes. You could simply offer more value. As we know, people buy when value exceeds price. So if they're saying no, that means your value might not quite be at or above your price point, which means you need to either lower your price point or increase your value. In my opinion, you should keep your price point the same and do things to increase your value. What are you doing now that gives your clients a higher incentive to want to work with you. What problems are you solving? What guarantees are you giving? That is how you can become more valuable at a fixed price point. And I know it sounds stupid, but you'll never know if people will pay more money until you start asking them for it. And every no that you get is one less no that you're going to get for the future. If you double your rates and lose half your clients, it's still a win because you're doing half the work the same amount of income. And that's a win-win situation. Scaling this business really is about pricing yourself outside of the reach of the people that you don't want to work with. If they aren't your ideal client, you shouldn't feel guilty about saying no to them. The real money is found in the micro niche. It's that place where you have to find a specialty instructor to give you the special kind of training. And because you're now considered a rarity, you're able to charge a lot more because you provide a lot more value to that niche. I've discovered that instrument ratings have a much larger return on investment than primary training. An instrument rating typically takes about one to two months max to do. If you buy yourself a flight simulator for less than $10,000, let's say FAA approved, you can log up to 10 or 20 hours towards an instrument rating on the simulator, get the ratings done in less than 60 hours of work, for a paycheck of ten dollars to $20,000, depending on the client. That's what I do. I have a system that works close to perfect, and I actually make more money on instrument ratings than I do for private pilot training. Just remember, the best way to build an offer is to build an offer that is so good, people feel stupid for saying no. Moving right along to step three, which is fulfillment. Basically, fulfillment is an extension of the offer. An offer is who, what, and how. Fulfillment is an expansion of how. So you build an offer, who you're helping, what you're helping them with, and how you're going to do it. But let's expand on that slightly. You need systems. You need a plan. Your whole job relies on getting people what they need. So the best way to fulfill this training is to outline everything. Have a very simple system that works for training. For example, I have a 12-step process for private, five-step process for instrument. Having something so simple that you just can't break it. Every outline that I have ever made for flight training starts with something like this. A title and basic principles that have to be done. And then I can build upon those principles as I build the training course. But it all starts with this. Then you can outline it and get it bigger and better. You want to keep it so straightforward and practical that you just can't mess it up. You want to have solid lessons. Again, again, you can read everything here on the webpage in the description below. If you just go through this and build out lessons and outlines that just make sense, you'll be able to have a system that works so good, you just can't mess it up. I've discovered that if you simply break down the required maneuvers of the helpful and specific exercises, it will help the learner to build skills intended to be learned by the correct execution of the maneuver. So instead of teaching landings, teach the things that build up to landings. 
so that when they actually land, they learned all the skills necessary to land up to that point. Instead of coming down and doing a bunch of slamming goes, trying to figure out skills that land itself can't teach you, but learning to land can teach you. It's an important paradigm shift. You want to have a good syllabus, assign homework, give out resources to your people, keep your systems simple, use the KISS method. Complexity is the enemy of execution. You want to do everything that you can do to boil stuff down to the nitty gritty. I use tools like Zapier, eSignature, School, Notion, Descript, CapTouch, Captions. So many great apps to make life easier for you as a business owner and as a content creator and flight instructor. Don't forget about QuickBooks. Part of Fulfillment is getting a solid mentor to help you keep on the straight and narrow. I've screwed up more times than most people have even tried. You want to find someone like myself who's been there, done that, bought the t-shirt and listen to what they say. My number one job as a mentor is to get you out of your own way and give you the clarity that you need. You can get you can get free CFI mentoring from safepilots.org. It's very good. I highly recommend it. If you want to join the CFI Roadmap Coaching Program and work with me and my team to get you the results that you want in your business and as a CFI, there's going to be a link in the description below and on this webpage where you can book a call with us to see if we're the kind of fit that you want working with you. Moving on, you don't want to waste time on things that don't really work. I spent three or four years digging around, losing money, having zero direction, basically no idea what I was doing, wasting my time on things that didn't work. So my advice to you is this, instead of spending three or four years to figure stuff out on your own, work with me for three or four weeks and I'll give you the shortcut with the same and better results that you could have gotten done somewhere else in 10 times the time. And here's a little bonus tip too for you flight instructors out there. Don't use the ACS as a training manual. It's a testing standard. Good pilots pass the ACS without trying, but bad pilots have to try to pass the ACS. Just keep your fulfillment process simple. Remember, five steps for instruments all you need, 12 steps for privates all you need. If you can write it down on a napkin, you're probably doing a good job. Step four, marketing. I'm going to really oversimplify this. People can't buy your stuff if they don't know you exist. This makes marketing the key to letting everyone know that you exist and have this solution to their problem. Now, I have a lot of stuff on this page with from Alex Ramosi, which is this guy right here. And something that he says is this, in order to have a successful business, you need the stuff to sell, which is an offer. You need people to sell it to, which is leads, which is what we're talking about now. And then you gotta get those people to buy. That's sales. So we're gonna break that down right now. I'm gonna tell you once, I'll tell you again, if you don't buy Alex Ramosi's books and read them, then just quit right now, okay? $100 million offers, $100 million leads, critical books for the flight instructor if you want to be good at business. I highly recommend those. There's a link to them on this webpage. So we want leads, right? What is a lead? A lead is a person that you can contact. If you can contact them, they are leads. And you don't just want any leads, you want engaged leads. People who are engaged actively, people who are interested in what it is that you do. That is important. I can go into a lot on that, but I'm gonna boil it down to two points. Building an audience from free content and paid ads. Those are where we're gonna get the majority of our leads from. There's other ways to get leads. I'm talking about two of them. Okay. So how building an audience works. Post great free content. That is the solution. Now, if you want a deeper understanding on this, go read Hermosi's books, right? But as far as right now, marketing using paid ads forces your stuff in front of the eyes of your desired audience very effective, but free content makes all other advertising forms more effective. So if you reach out to someone and they can't find any content related to what you do, they're much less likely to buy. But on the flip side, if you have lots of free and valuable content for them to consume, they're more likely to buy. So it's all about building brand trust. Good brands are built by having a reputation of being reliable. Good brands are full of goodwill from all the free stuff they get out to people. Good brands are known, liked, and trusted. I call this the KLT factor because people only work with people that they know, like, and trust. Now, it all starts with trust, and trust is formed by four points. Listening to people's pains and desires, understanding them, empathizing with them, and offering them clear solutions. Now, how do we do that? practically. It starts with trust. First, create meaningful connections with people by resonating and relating to them. You can network with them in person and build relationships. Create content that speaks to their situation as to where they are, 
where they want to be and what needs to happen to get them from where they are to where they want to be. What has to happen to get them from A to B? Then you will build trust with them. Then post stories on Instagram that show you being personable, show you in your day-to-day -day life. People will start to like you just because of who you are as a person. You're the face of the brand, right? Then run paid ads to become more widely known across your audience. No like and trust, but it starts with trust. A good mindset for videos is I hear you, I get you, and here's a solution. The framework for making content is very simple. It's a three-step process. Hook, retain, reward. Grab people's attentions with a good hook in your videos, then retain them with valuable information, and then reward them at the end for sticking to it the whole time. Give them a reason to come back for more. That's going to be in Alex Ramosi's book, $100 million leads. Again, read the book. Networking builds trust and content builds trust, but you get twice as much trust if you network with people and at the same time, give them your free content that you made. Come on, how many flight instructors have you met that have swiped out a QR code for you to scan with your phone that when you meet them automatically takes you to their website or their YouTube or their Instagram where you can consume all of their free content content all designed to help you overcome your problems. I mean, that builds insane levels of trust. The word author comes from the word authority. So when you author something like a book, article, or a video, or anything, it puts you in a position of authority authority in the audience's eyes. And that builds insane amounts of trust. So when it comes to making this content, you might ask, what kind of content am I making? There's two types of content as far as videos are concerned, short form and long form. What this looks like is Instagram reels, TikTok videos, YouTube shorts, carousels, Instagram stories, long form on YouTube, so on. Typically, short form content establishes you as an entity and builds the initial trust that kind of gets you in, while long form content nurtures your leads, nurtures your audience, and keeps them happy with good, solid value to sit on while they're with you. I like to say that short form gets you there and long form keeps you there. Now, with all these prospects that you're getting from your content, you build a funnel that brings them in from the top of watching your videos all the way down to the bottom of the funnel where you can help them and get paid. It basically boils down to how your free content and paid ads work together to bring in the right people and bring them to the funnel. The first thing is you attract viewers. They interact with your stuff. You message them. You set appointments with them. You help them solve their problems. And then you close a deal and get paid. You have advertisements that get you followers. Those followers respond to your call to actions. They'll be nurtured on YouTube, respond to your messaging ads, and they'll find their way into your DMs. From the DMs, they'll book sales calls. And then from that point, become clients. Sometimes you'll have a lead ad like, some sort of free resource or something. And that free resource turns into a lead magnet. And that lead magnet pulls them into a sales call and then you can, again, book them in as a client. That is how the funnel works. If you need content ideas, there's several ways you can do this, but my favorite is do stuff. Talk about the stuff you did and repeat. It's that simple. Just tell stories about what you've been through and the people that resonate with that will want to listen to you. One way you can do this is look at yourself five years ago. What would you tell yourself? What were the things that you went through? Talk about those things. Again, please read the $100 million leads book. It's the best book on marketing I have ever read, period. Now, I oversimplified marketing. If I had to leave you with one thing about marketing, it comes down to this, building brand trust. That's what marketing is all about. If you have that, the right people will see the right stuff. They'll trust you. They'll want to work with you. And then you can get clients. That's what it boils down to. Building brand trust through creating value, giving it to people. And when you give them more value and more value and more value, eventually they're going to come to you asking to work with you because it's like they feel obligated to work with you now because of all of what you've given them. They want to give you something back now. Extreme example, but it does happen and it does work and it does give you so much leverage in those sales conversations, which is next. Step five, sales. When's the last time Cirrus sold an airplane? In my opinion, Cirrus has never sold an airplane. Cirrus doesn't sell airplanes. People buy Cirrus products, just like Lamborghini, Porsche, Ferrari. These companies don't have to sell cars. People search them out to buy their car because they have a reputation of being reliable, good, and prestigious. If you establish 
establish your brand in a way that builds so much trust that people come to you asking to buy, that is the mindset you want to have when you go into sales. Sales is all about giving people clarity by helping them make decisions that will solve their problems. You being the flight instructor, the decision you're helping them with is the decision of choosing to work with you. You must learn the art of sell without selling. You need to have an offer that is so good that it markets itself. You need to have marketing that is so good that it sells itself. And you need to have a sales process that is so focused on helping people solve problems that they ask to buy. People don't like being sold, but they love being helped. One of the reasons people don't buy is because they don't believe that you can actually solve their problems. How do we overcome this? How do we show them that we can solve their problems? The solution is to help them through consultations, showing them that your stuff truly can help them. Your job is to give them the value that brings them clarity to solve their problems. People buy from emotion, not from logic. So tune to that side of them that helps them feel good about working with you to get the results that they want. If you build rapport during the pre-sales process, all you gotta do in sales is build the gap between A and B, where they are now versus where they want to be, and then they will buy. Remember, people buy if value exceeds price and people buy if there is a reasonable gap between where they are now and where they want to be. If the gap's too close, there's no reason to buy. They can hop up themselves. If the gap is too wide, it's too overwhelming and they won't want to do it. But if the gap is just right and they see, oh, it is possible to get from here to here, but I'm going to need help. Who can help me? That's going to be yours truly. So building the gap between A and B is critical in sales. The trick is this, don't sell to people. Don't be your typical sleazy car salesman that nobody likes. Instead, consult, help solve problems. Remember this, nothing changes if nothing changes. And change is often uncomfortable. You have to be okay with that from your standpoint as a CFI, but you also have to communicate that to the people you are selling to. Nothing changes if nothing changes. You will still be at point A unless you change something to get to point B. That change might not be what you want to happen. That change might be uncomfortable, but it may be completely necessary to get you the results that you want. And here is how you can fix that. Here is the help. Here is the answer that clears up the mental fog that you have in your head. This will give you clarity. This will give you results. Here's how I can help you. And that's the way you want to sell, not based off of pitching, pitching, but instead off of helping. And that right there sums up all five of the steps of how to be successful in business as an independent flight instructor. I have a bonus for you right here. This is the entire five-step process oversimplified. Listen to people who've done it before you. Take their advice. Find a high-level overview of what you want. Find your ikigai if you haven't heard of that term before. Find a problem you can solve, people to solve it for, that value it. Listen to their pains, discover their desired outcomes, show empathy, understanding, offer a clear solution that solves their problem, make videos and content on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok that resonates with their pains and desires that they are experiencing. Have calls to action that make them follow you or message you. Talk to the leads, get them on sales calls, help them choose to buy, give them the stuff that they bought and repeat that process. That's how it boils down. So this has been the five-step process to becoming an independent CFI. Again, I gave you the abridged version. If you go and read this webpage, it will have more detailed information that I may have just skimmed over. But for now, that is the basic process, the basic principle of what you need to know to be successful as an independent flight instructor. So if you want to work with me and my team to get your business to the next level, go ahead and book a call with me. I have a link in the description below and would absolutely love to walk you through the process process to get you the results that you want. In the meantime, stay tuned for more detailed training videos as they come out. I'm working on a series right now that goes through each of these pillars in great detail. This will be free training on YouTube for all you entrepreneurial minded CFIs like myself. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get right back to you. Peace.